Solar Break Green Greg here, and today we're gonna to talk about nine insane secrets solar salesmen won't tell you, or saleswoman. So stay tuned. So I've visited a lot of homeowners who bought solar, and they're saying, I wish I knew this about solar. Or sometimes I might even say, ah, oh, solar is a scam, or I got ripped off. Well, it's because they didn't have the proper information. And I've seen a pattern with this where they have a door-to-door -door salesman that knocks on the door, tells them about solar, and, oh, I'm just here to give information, you know? Or they click on a Facebook ad or YouTube ad saying, oh, free solar panels, or the government cover the cost of solar. And the next thing they know, they're signing a contract for solar, and they just never bought solar before, and they don't know what questions to ask, right? You, you, you don't know what you don't know. So... What I've seen is most of the time when people said, oh, I got ripped off or scammed, it's because they didn't know what questions to ask. And it's one of these nine insane secrets that these solar companies won't even tell you. So let's get into it. Number nine, solar panels produce electric, not store it. So during a power outage, you will not have electric even if the sun is shining on your solar panels unless you have a battery or end phase IQ8 sunlight option, okay? And I have a separate video about end phase, um, and I have a separate video about batteries. I'll leave a link to this at the end of the video so you can review that video for more information. Number eight, understand local net metering and electric rates before buying solar. So let's first talk about what net metering is in case you're not familiar. So remember I said that solar panels, they produce electric, but they don't store it, right? So you have to have a way of storing that electric. Well, one way of doing that is with net metering, where you are effectively using the electric company as your battery. So you'll see here off to the right top, um, during the daytime, solar is producing electricity. Some of that electric is being used in the home, and some electric is being fed back to the utility company, right? And so it's almost like charging up a battery. Now at nighttime, at nighttime, the solar is not producing any electric, okay? But you have the lights on, et cetera. And so you're taking electric from the utility company. This is like discharging a battery, okay? Now here's the thing, is you need to find out from your utility company what they pay you when you feed electric to them and what they charge you for taking electric back out, okay? And also any other minimum fees and charges, okay? Now, very briefly, here in Florida, we have a minimum monthly fee of roughly $30 or so, and the rate uh, feeding back to utility company is the same coming back out. Now, California, for instance, is a lot different. They have time of use rates, and during the daytime, they're going to pay you very little for your electric, and at nighttime, they're going to charge you, you know, two, three, five times as much sometimes, depending on the time of day, the week, et cetera, and the season. So this is why it's very important to find out what your local utility uh, net metering policy is. And it's different for every state and every uh, utility. Uh, Duke, Florida is not the same as Duke, North Carolina, for instance. So... You can go to the utility company's website, you know, look under uh, net metering or solar or renewable energy and find out uh, this information. And of course, you know, ask the solar company. If the solar company doesn't understand properly what the proper rates are, um, that's a red flag. You should not go with that company. Okay. So, um, but you want to double check this information. Number seven, never ask how many solar panels do I need? Instead, ask what the total panel watts or KW is. So home solar panels that come in many, many different wattages and higher total watts will produce more electric, okay? For example, let's say you have 20 solar panels, the 400 watts. That's 8,000 watts total or 8 KW, okay? Versus 20 solar panels, there are 300 watts that's 6,000 watts total or 6KW, okay? So obviously the one that's 8KW is gonna produce more electricity. It's not the same. 
you would need 27 solar panels at 300 watts to equal 8,100 to get close to the 20 panels at 400, right? So you want to look at what the total watts are. And, and this, by the way, is in DC and has to be converted over to AC, but we'll talk about that a bit later. But know when you're comparing uh, solar panel quotes, you want to ask what the total watts of the solar panels are, okay? And there's a different video I'd have to do comparing and selecting solar panels. Let me know if you want me to do a video on that. Number six, undersizing the solar system to make the price look lower, but have a higher electric bill than expected. And I hate to say it, but you know, some companies might cook the numbers to make the electric production look higher with solar. And this distorts the electric bill offset and the savings. Hey, you know, the door to door guy, said, oh, just give me one electric bill. And so the problem with that is it might not be accurate. So in order to have a proper and accurate estimate, provide the solar company with 12 months of electric bills for more accurate estimate of the savings and the electric bill offset. If you don't have this, then you could use the annual kilowatt hours, and sometimes that's on the electric bill. Um, it's just that your month-to-month -month data might be a little bit different. And be sure to understand uh, your monthly bills before and after solar, and this should be on the proposal, and what the utility minimum charges are, any increase in solar payments, uh, what the solar production guarantee is for the first year. This will prevent any unhappy surprises. Number five, older homes, uh, homes that are gas and electric and they convert over to all electric may require expensive electrical upgrades to host a solar system that can cover 100% of your electric use. So this may mean upgrading transformers, uh, the power lines going to the house, um, the uh, circuit panel, uh, just for instance. And so you want to know these things ahead of time, if at all possible. Now, here in Florida, if you have a modern home, this is not so much of a problem because here in Florida, we run air conditioning, and the electrical system is built with that in mind. Number four. String inverters versus microinverters. So besides the solar panels, we have this component called an inverter. An inverter converts DC power from the solar panels over to AC. That way it can be used in the home or fed back to the utility company. We have a string inverter here in the bottom, which means all the solar panels, usually it's something like you know 20 to 30 solar panels or so, are all connected to one inverter, okay? On the top, we have a microinverter where each panel has its own inverter. And so the difference being is, hey, with a string inverter, you only got one inverter. And so if that one inverter is not working, the whole system goes down and you're not producing any electric. Okay, kaput. With the microinverter system, since each panel has its own inverter, if that particular panel inverter is not working, the rest of the solar panels will continue to work and produce electric. You just produce a little bit less. So that's the advantage of the microinverter. Also, with a microinverter, you have monitoring for each individual panel and you can make sure that all the solar panels are working and you can tell if they're shaded or not shaded. And so um, it gives you just transparency of what the solar system is doing and also you get this dashboard that shows you how much you fed back to the electric company, how much you consumed, how much went to a battery if you have a battery, etc. Now I have a whole video about the end phase energy system with a battery. Um, I'm not going to go into it here, but I'll leave a link at the end of this video. Another system I'd recommend is SolarEdge with optimizers. Now their technology is a little bit different, but they do have individual panel monitoring like Enphase does. And you'll notice here that uh, there's two solar panels on the bottom left that are black. This means those solar panels are not producing power. In this case, um, this was later on in the day, and there were some tree limbs that were shading these two solar panels. So I informed the customer that those tree branches need to be trimmed. And if we did not have this individual panel data, we would not know that those branches need to be trimmed, right? So that's very helpful. And again, if there was a problem, right away, the installer and the homeowner knows exactly which solar panels are not working. 
Now with a string inverter, yeah, they gave you the amount consumed and how much a solar system produced, but how do you know all the solar panels are working? You just don't. And if you have 30 something solar panels on your rooftop, you know, it could be a chance that some are not working. You know, maybe there's a bad electrical connection somewhere or a squirrel has chewed through some wires or a breaker has tripped. You know, these things can happen. And so what I've experienced is, you know, homeowners will all of a sudden get in a high electric bill. Geez, uh, is the solar system even working? Is something wrong with it? Or was it that, hey, we had a hotter month than usual and I used more air conditioning or I had family over? You know, there's no telling. And what I found and experienced is, you know, a solar company just not going to make a service call and go on the roof and test each of those 30 solar panels to make sure they're working. You know, they're going to be reluctant to do that. And the string inverter is not going to catch uh, if there's certain solar panels that might not be working. Solar Bank Green Greg here. I hope you found this video helpful so far. Hey, before we forget, hey, I'd really appreciate it. You hit that thumbs up and you hit that subscribe button. This lets YouTube know this content is valuable and shows it to more homeowners just like you. And also, when you hit subscribe, you won't miss my next video. Thank you so much. Let's continue. Number three. What solar companies to avoid? Well, and again, I'm not saying all of them, but door-to-door -door salesmen or saleswomen, these people tend to be, you know, high pressure sales tactics, sometimes misleading information like free solar panels or today only discount. And what often happens is they're in the home and they're just trying to sell you on the payment. They're saying, oh yeah, see this? The solar payment's lower than utility company. And you know, doesn't that make sense? That's a no brainer. Well, you got to know more than just what the payment is. And so that, that's a problem I have. And again, not all door-to-door -door salespeople. I mean, there's some good people out there, but unfortunately, there's a lot that are um, not so good. And they're just salespeople and not really solar consultants. Number two, how much lifetime is left on a roof? And I've seen this happen too. So let me explain. If you have a roof and it's old and you install solar on it, um, what could happen is a couple years later, all of a sudden you need to replace the roof. Well, then all these solar panels, all the racking, all the wiring, it all has to come off the roof. And then it's got to be reinstalled with new solar mounts. And that can cost thousands of dollars. What I would suggest is if your roof only has a few years of life left to it, you're best off just getting a new roof. So that way you got a new roof and you got solar panels, which have a 25 year warranty. And then you don't have to worry about it. And number one, solar financing. Ooh, watch out for this. This is a biggie. So you could do a solar loan. You could do cash. You could do a lease or PPA, power purchase agreement. And I got a whole video on this, but I'm just going to give you a very brief explanation on this. So here's the thing. I used to do solar loans, and it was pretty affordable to buy down the interest rate. But the problem I have is that as interest rates have climbed, the fee that the solar company has to pay, the finance company, has gone up a lot. And by the way, these solar finance companies, they make all the solar consultants and salesmen, saleswomen, sign a confidentiality agreement where we're not even allowed to disclose to the homeowner what these fees are. They actually make us sign an agreement. So it's shh sort of situation. And I, I think that's being dishonest. I like to be, I like to be transparent. Um, but these fees weren't that bad three years ago when I was doing a, you know, very low interest rate financing. But as interest rates have gone up in 2024, I would suggest you do a cash. And if you don't have the cash on hand, go to a credit union and get the loan and get the cash price. Because again, it'll save you probably nine to fifteen thousand dollars on the average home solar system. And yes, the interest rate's going to be terrible. It's going to be like 8%. But when interest rates go back down, then you can refinance it at a lower rate, okay? And you avoid uh, paying that uh, solar finance company fee. Um, so that's what I suggest in 2024. It may change. If it changes, I'll let you know. Um, the lease and PPA, personally, I do not like them. Why? Because it locks you into a 20-year agreement. And... Particularly here in Florida, people sell their homes every three to five years. 
or sometimes they refinance them and it could just cause some problems on trying to sell your home or sometimes even refinance. Okay, that's a brief explanation. But I'll leave a link to this video at the end. Solar Big Green Greg here, and on this channel, we cover home solar PV and battery, solar pool heating, and energy efficiency. And I do it all without any clickbait or sales talk. You know, I'm a homeowner just like you, so I know how it is. You know, sometimes you're just, you know, trying to get some questions answered or, you know, get information. If that's you, you just want information, hey, hit that thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Oh, and by the way, in the comments, let me know where you're from. It's always fun to know where people are from. Now, far my voice is reaching to help out people with solar. Thank you so much. And have a great sunny day. Here's the next video.